How do you, how would you deal with empty hands? If I just don't have weapons, I'm coming aggressively. So the empty hands, I think about it just like same thing as a, a knife. All right, so uh, empty hands. How can apply these things in empty hands? You know, and if you look at the Filipino martial arts, everything you do with a weapon, we can do it empty hands. Uh, it translates very easily. Again, the key thing is movement and learning how to apply these things. Um, but like I tell my students, uh, hand placements for myself, we can't determine if the person is going to go right shoulder, left shoulder, center, punch, grab, whatever. But we can kind of help negotiate with it as far as like 50%. And that's by placing our hands. So if I have an open position like this, I'm saying I don't want any trouble, my situational stance, I leave my center open. That being said is because if I'm here, he's not gonna reach for my shoulders. He's gonna go for the opening. So if I'm here like this, this kind of gives me that opening. It's already here. So even if he does the other side purpose of the camera, I'm just doing this and I'm not using my hands. I'm using my forms, I'm turning my body, right? So if I'm in this position, I, I turn my body, right? And it's just kind of like some of the stuff that even Sifu Fong taught you in, in the system, Wing Chun, you can turn, use your hips and turn, right? So this is the same basic application. It's already here. And if I have my hand center chest, it's because I want them to grab my shoulders instead of my chest. So if I'm here, he goes for my shoulder. Again, this gives me the opportunity to decide which way I want to go. The only part is I don't know if he's grabbing left or right, but it's only two, so I should be able to helpfully determine that to begin with. Uh, so if I'm in this position, I can go here. He may reach for that shoulder, I can go here. Now, why determine which way to use your hands? Situational awareness is key maybe the door is over there and that's where I have to go. And that being said, if I have to go that way and he's in front of me, I'm not gonna be here. Because if he comes to reach this shoulder, then my door's over here. Now I've gotta get to this. So, so I might be here, look, I don't want any trouble. So when he reaches for me, I go here. But people say, what if he uses that other hand? That's okay, he can use that other hand. Because even though I'm here, I don't want no trouble, I can push to get to that door. Because I'm going to his back, mm -hmm. right? That being said. Now, let's say if I'm here in this position and the door is still over there and he comes in here and I'm, I'm just doing the same thing, right? So just like we talked about the knife, that's my shot, but it's to be ugly and pass, right? So this motion, the dive, just enough to create space. Maybe I throw a shot, maybe I throw an elbow so I can get into that position. It all depends. Those are things you can do. And maybe if he's coming center in this position like that, maybe I scoop it and elbow and smash it here. Right? But again, all these attributes are developed from the training with the knife and the stick. And that's what develops your hand and eye coordination uh, all together and foot coordination. So again, that motion, I'm just scooping, I'm just going on the inside. Right? But when I do that on this side, I like to control the elbow. Because naturally people pull their arm back. So when I'm in this position, one, two, I control it. Now we're here. But look, I'm already halfway past. Right? All I have to do is keep going. So instead of teaching them to do a technique where you're going to go, I would say, I'm going to do this, to do one, to two, to three, flow, you know, those are things that can happen when you're tied up, right, at, at that position, or at least you have a greater success in applying them when you're already making connections in that aspect, because maybe I'm here and everything, maybe I break that position, now I have that, and then I can go here, whatever may be the case. Right? So, in a tie-up position where his hands are already on me, I could be successful there. Where he's reaching out to me, that is, because he naturally pulls back, right? Pull back naturally. There you go, if I touch him, he pulls back, it's already gone. So that's why when I go here, I just go straight to the point. Don't mess around with it for street, right? And I mean, even though in this position, I may just kick him in the groin, whatever it may be. Now, I never want to let people get close enough Again, that's where you have to learn your fighting measure for yourself. He can't reach me or whatever, so he's coming towards me. I may teep and go. I may go for the knee, any of those things. But if you can get a weapon of opportunity, drink my coffee, throw it in his face and go. So for me, as far as empty hands, I always look at grabbing me and even striking. Maybe he has his hands already on me and he's going to strike at me. My hands have to be up high right from that position so even if that's my elbow shot and this is where training and other arts really help because they give you a better understanding of how to apply the tools from that other system and not to be political
but that's JKD in a, in a sense. You know, that's what JKD is. Researching, getting other tools from other systems to, to figure things out to be functional. Um, not trying to keep it in a streamline. No, that's not the technique you gotta use. You gotta use what works. Yeah. And that's the key thing. So anytime someone has you here, you know, you're thinking, how can I deal with this? You know, key thing is I have this arm here. I mean, this one here, like that, I can do it. But you hit, always hit. Don't worry about technique, hit the guy first. If you're sitting here going, what technique should I use? It's too late. If I'm here like this, I go, boom, growing shot. I'm sure it'll distract him enough that I can, and I'm not gonna punch in the street. I'll open palm strike, mm -hmm. right? Always create the elbows. Those are the best tools, elbows, knees, and open palm mm -hmm. for street purposes, but I don't teach my students to punch with their hands yeah. just because of that. So I guess that's where the ding, during long during, all those work great. Right, and uh, that's one of the key things when it comes to empty hands. That's funny because we actually we actually talked about that last week in a different episode about street fighting using palm versus fist. Yes, and I much prefer using open hand as well. Yeah, and that's one of the key things. I mean, because uh, military, when I talk to military, even the operators and stuff like that, people that work in the, the infantry and you know rangers, whatever you call it. It would suck to be hitting with an open hand or a closed hand, and then you can't use your weapon, you mm -hmm. can't use your radio. Vice versa for real self-defense, get your key fob, use your cell phone. So that's why it's really important to not only practice closed fists, but also practice closed open hands. So like if, if a feeder, like in my, in my school, I had the guy holding the focus mitt, right? And I say, he's gonna jab, but he's in his situational stance, he jabs and boom, that's your jab. Shoulder comes up naturally, you're crossed, same thing. Mm -hmm. Now your shoulder's in proper alignment. So teaching that is great because, and practicing it, because a lot of people are so used to hitting closed fists, mm -hmm. even without gloves. Um, but that just is habit. People train it out of habit. So. Yeah. Well, that was awesome. Well, thank you so much for today. Awesome. I'm gonna leave his information down in the description below. So if you guys live in Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, Jacksonville, please go check him out. Well, thank you guys. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks.